I look at each of you, and I see the marks of this long and terrible war. If we die tonight, mankind dies with us. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. We're all here. A couple of big movies this week. Uh, Matt Ashley, it's uh, Christy and uh, Alonzo, Van Mankiewicz. Some of us get last names, others. <laughs> I'm like Sting. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, uh, Terminator, uh, which one was this? The fifth one? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Terminator, I had a big uh, argument on 2YT Sports about uh, all the Rocky movies because we watched the trailer for Creed. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get to Terminator in, in just a second. But, and that was with Francis, and Francis was like, he knows everything that happened in every Rocky movie by the number. Like, and, and maybe people do. I do too. I guess <laughs> I, I have no. He was like, yeah, in Rocky Five. I'm like, who remembers what happens in Rocky Five? But it turns out right. no, nothing interesting. Which one? Um, <laughs> Mr. T in it. That's the four. Three. That's three. Right? three. 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 Yeah, that I know. One and three are the only Rocky okay. movies that matter. Um, okay, uh, Terminator uh, uh, Genesis. Genesis. Terminator Five. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, forget everything you know, because this movie sure has, uh, <laughs> or at least it wants you to, in that J.J. Um, Abrams, fuck it, we're going to start over, but not start over, but do start over a thing, where it's a time travel paradox, and it loops itself, and um, John Connor sends Kyle Reese to the past, but it's not the past that it used to be, because now it's a different past, and the Terminator went to the earlier thing, and it's very migraine-inducing, take a look. <laughs> The machine sent a Terminator back to the time before the war to kill my mother, Sarah Connor. Sir, let me save her. The time you're going back to her, she'll be scared and weak. Take care of her for me, Kyle. It's all wrong. John sent me here to save you. From the Terminator that was sent back to kill me, I know, but we already took care of him. We? I've been waiting for you. The time John sent you to, it no longer exists. Everything's changed. We can stop Judgment Day from happening. Run! Where is he? Matt and I saw this together, and I turned to Matt when it was over, I'm like, I'm so confused. Because there's a line, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a line toward the end that like changes everything that you had just seen. I'm so confused still. Does it make sense? You could talk about it a little bit without spoiling it. There is a, the very end of the movie includes a line from one character to another that in changes present everything. day that doesn't, okay. that seems in to... In 2017. 2000, that seems to unwind every little, every, very, everything that yeah. happened in the movie. But I had made a, I, I watched it with my wife and... Uh, and I, yeah, about 40 minutes in, I said, uh, I don't understand uh, anything. <laughs> well, and she was like, yeah, I don't either. She's like, I gave up like 10 minutes ago. I'm like, yeah. Because that's I'm the point. Up. Yeah. That's the point where it stops making any sense, right? At the, mm -hmm. the beginning of the movie, like, okay, you're kind of <clears> going <throat> with it. And you're, you know, you come into this, you know, we're seeing the scenes at the end of the war against the machines that have been hinted at in a few different mm -hmm. other movies. And we're getting those scenes. And then where Kyle Reese ends up going back in time. Things are, are different than we expect. And the movie kind of riffs on that for a bit, and then it starts to go sideways, plot-wise, and it stops making a lot of sense. And the time travel in this movie and the way that affects the plot is really, once you get like about halfway through the second act, it just gets shoddy, and they just start throwing stuff yeah. in there. I think kind of just for laughs and just to like do <laughs> or, twists or that don't make any sense. Yeah, the, the, the Flash's time travel right. on TV makes more sense no, than this movie. You know, the time travel in the Austin Powers movie <laughs> is tighter than this, and that's really disappointing. This movie made me think of, you know, at the beginning you start seeing things that you're expecting to see, and, and it's, it's like if you go see a band, you know, if you were to go see a Rush concert, right? And, and early on, if they're hitting 
some of the big songs that you love and you want them to play it, it's not quite as tight as when you uh -uh. saw them earlier. Take that back. All right, maybe not. Much. Mush still sounds amazing. Okay. Maybe somebody, like the police, right? Like okay. the police get back together and like, yeah, you love the songs and you know it, but they're not as tight and they're not as fun. But you know, there's a familiarity there and that's cool. And then they start playing new stuff. And then you're like, and the new stuff like the is like half-baked <laughs> versions of the old stuff. And that's what they do, and I, I, which is why a concert with a band getting back together leads with the shitty new stuff. <laughs> and, plays, and that's what this movie should have done. Like, show us all the crap that nobody cares about at the beginning, and then start showing us I, the old stuff. I mean, let, if, we, if we take the time travel stuff off the table and just talk about this as an action movie, I still think it's, I think it's okay. I think it has a couple of effective set pieces. There are a few good, you know, fights with the liquid Terminators. Some cool special effects, but the 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 problem with the time the time travel stuff is that it removes all the stakes because anything that can be accomplished or done or changed can be undone like that by, going, by going someplace else. Exactly. Right. Yeah. right they're ripping off Bill and Ted. It's not. <laughs> it's not just. <laughs> and, and maybe I'm wrong here, but it wasn't just alternate. It wasn't just time travel. It was like alternate realities. Because also. the time travel tweaked things. Nerd. Right, right. It was which, alternate paths. Alternate right. paths, which sort of explained, is the only possible explanation for the ending, that there's an alternate <laughs> path where the thing that just happened, yeah, whatever. So, but I, for whatever reason, I, I am, a, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys, and when a movie loses its way like that and, and, and st stops making sense about the very thing that is, a, that is so key to everyone's enjoyment of the franchise, I, I usually care. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. there was I was able to be like, yeah, okay. If they say that they need to go to this time period, I believe them, I, even though I no possible way it makes sense. And you love time and, travel movies, and I, I know love, that they usually matter to you. To it make does. Sense. So for whatever right. reason, maybe because this was a degree of stupid, <laughs> that that didn't bother me. And then once the sort of, you know, once you're like, ah, oh, once you're in your zone, then I was like, hey, Arnold Schwarzenegger is. Pretty funny in this movie. Okay, let's talk about that. I want to I want to come to that next because yeah, this is the the Ballyhooed return of Arnold Schwarzenegger to the role that made him a superstar over 30 years ago, and it's like watching your drunk old uncle at a oh. wedding. No, it is. No, oh, it that's is. Harsh. No, it's not because here's why. He, it's, it's still funny, but it's your like hands he, are cold. I know. I, I have a warm heart though. You okay. do. <laughs> I, I need love. Um, so it just feels like okay, She's it's jokey, it's jokey, and it's self-referential bordering on parody when he says i'll be back like it's not cute it's like no uh, but, but it's saved really? by but that line is saved they don't let it linger it doesn't even have a moment it's saved by amelia clark going what i'll be back what And, and, and she gets I, I, to say, come with me if you want to live. I don't know. It, just, it feels I, like he's returning to this thing, and it feels recycled and cheesy. I, and, I, mean, I thought he was fine. I thought, I thought he made it kind of fun. The One thing I will definitely give this movie points for, the the rejuvenating old actors technology has gotten a lot better yeah, since, yeah, say, yeah. Tron Legacy. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. in this week, I saw this and Ant-Man, both of which involve like, showing you what the leading man would have looked like 20 or so years ago, 25 years ago. And um, it's a lot, you know, it's a little waxy maybe, but the young Arnold robot looks fairly it looks, yeah. dead on. They, yeah, they, they very got, meticulously recreate yeah. the scene where he arrives naked at Rick Griffith Observatory. Right, and right. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, so also the, the big main thrust of this is that the cloud is evil. Yeah. Right, this, well, this, yeah. and I have a problem with like just the rampant hypocrisy of this, like I did with Jurassic World, saying, "Oh, corporate greed is bad." Brought to you by Mercedes Benz and Samsung. <laughs> but, so the Terminator movie wants to tell you that the, the cloud is evil, and so please don't buy movie tickets on your phone, <laughs> and please don't tweet or post about it afterward. Which was also the uh, message of sex tape. <laughs> I, and I actually I wrote that in my review. I'm like, sex tape was right. Don't upload things to the cloud. They, they are smart about sort of updating the idea of Skynet. When in in a, for an age where we're all yeah. willingly happily Unshow, staring right. at our devices, and they, and they throw in a military component. They, they, it was like a throwaway twenty second line about how Skynet is also that part of this is 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 involved with the contracts with the military, mm -hmm. and that is clearly what went wrong. Did we learn nothing from war games? I, I don't know. I just there was a, there was there was some joy in this. There's a chase scene in helicopters at the end that irritated me that I actually would have been higher on because then it just, it, it, I, it was silly and it drove me nuts and like it, it, that, that seemed really dumb to me. But uh, and then and then J.K. Simmons shows up about halfway through the movie, a little more, maybe even more than halfway, whatever, and he doesn't get enough to do, but everything he does, 
elevates everybody, I think, right. you're around happy to see him. Yeah, certainly. you're so right. happy to see him, every line he has. But then, then like, you think he's going to be sort of the heroic savior because he's the guy who, right off the bat... Knows what's going on. And he has the best line in the movie. Yeah, he, absolutely. he does. What, what is his best? Well, I don't want to spoil oh, you know, it, but well, he's got the best. There, there, there are a lot of names that pop up in the remember. opening credits. You think, oh, wow, great. Like, I remember, <clears throat> oh, Courtney B. Vance is in this awesome one, like, one scene. One scene. Yeah. One scene. Right. Yeah, right, right, the right. whole um, Byung Han Lee as the T-1000 yes. bad cop, that stuff is pretty cool. I mean, it looks very similar to what we saw in T2. Mm -hmm. sure. I'm not sure it's evolved that much, but it's still, like, dazzling to see how it's even yeah. more. It's right. kind of fun. So some of that's cool. The thing that happens with the school bus on the Golden Gate Bridge mm -hmm. is, was, like, terrifying. That was good. And a that was full good, 360, yeah. that was yeah, pretty yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, thought, I just thought... Well, okay. I thought, so, I, well, this, I had fun. this movie's fine, but the problem is is that when you are part of the franchise where the first two movies are perfect, uh -huh. right. right, you pale in comparison. And so that's the thing. Like, if you're going to remake it, if you're going to do another Terminator after the first one and the second one are so, so good and iconic and great examples of what an action sci-fi movie should be, yeah, you're going to get compared to those, and if you're found wanting, sorry. And this one's not even as good as three, I think. But is it better than it's four? Better than four. Uh, it's better than four. It's better than, I will say it's better than four. I don't remember okay. three. It's definitely better than four. I liked it. I gave it a 6.8. Yeah, I, I, I had fun, but you have to, I mean, it, it, I totally concede. If you try to follow what's happening, you, I could have scored this a 2.8 because it's so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave it a 6 just for the adrenaline and, and some of the fun there action scenes, yeah. but it's it's a mess. Five. Five, it's okay. fine. So our average is a 5.7. It is at 20. 25%. It's dropping. Oh. Yeah. Jay Courtney? Is it Jai Courtney? Jay? Is he ever, ever going to get a break? <laughs> he actually, he's, he's a good guy in this this time, strangely. Who is he? He's, he's Kyle, Kyle Oh, he's Kyle. Right, right, right. Yeah, they have all like, these Aussies. They keep Jay putting Courtney. him in these big action movies, and they just... Were, it's, as a, I, I keep as a Game of Thrones fans, we have to mention Amelia Clark, Clark, but right. they, they didn't uh, pop either of them. No. They were fine. She's, they were, she's they got were, a little Linda Hamilton stuff going and on. And Jason Clark, to me, is the blandest guy in the movies right now. Like, I never remember him from film to film. He's uh, the other Australian guy in this movie. He's right. Australian? The other Clark. Yeah. As, yeah. And the other Clark in this movie. And the other Clark. Bye.